Hi, uh, my name is uh, Seo Chang. I'm a CTO and uh, co-founder of Infineon. Um, today I'm gonna talk about our experience is integrating uh, Apache Arrow to using Watson component model to our product. So let me just kind of go over view, I'll just quick recap of what is the component model, just give everybody um, uh, 30,000 foot. Uh, basically, component model is allow you to virtualize execution uh, in a guest, what we call a guest, whether it's a Rust, Python, and Go, and JS. And using a magic up uh, with interface, allow you to basically invoke any of the guests from one language to another language. Um, and not just that, but make a call to outside uh, using a WASI interface, things like HTTP, files, GPU, to any side outside the world. And what are, what are those reasons? Is one is, like I said, the language interoperability, uh, security and sandbox, portability, and, and allow you to reuse a component regardless of language. Now, this is sort of a WASI, I don't know if you can see it, uh, spec that, uh, that supports very widely variety of standard system calls and system IOs, file system sockets, and also other things like the cloud services, that, and it, there's a lot of new stuff uh, that's being added on. Now, most of these interfaces are designed for invoking or building microservices or HTTP services, and you see a lot of these examples in these conferences in, in uh, Elsewell, and integrating into cloud services. Now, what I want to talk about is that using a component model for to build a uh, build your own sort of a data stack. So one good example is a, a structured data stack. So this is a, a well-known uh, roadmap of uh, all the different kind of tools and platforms around building a data stack, what I call structure, meaning that it deals with the structured data that from both batch and streams, ability to process the data warehouses, build a dashboard metrics. There's a lot of, a lot of uh, tooling and stuff there. But end of the day, it's not that much different from microservices because uh, you have to do transformation, you have to do filtering. There's a lot of common compute stuff. Besides that, if you don't um, sort of a kind of a uh, height or not talk about the, uh, the data layer, the storage side. Now, other one is, of course, the, uh, that everybody's talking about general AI stack, right? It's the same, same story, because general AI stack is a little bit different because we are dealing with a sort of a, a AI model, you know, prompt engineering, uh, integrated with the different kind of models. But at the end of the day, it's a, you are dealing with uh, manipulating um, uh, data. Uh, in this case, it may be you know, dealing with the vectors and tensors and other stuff. And it's same, same, same kind of story, right? Transformation. So you're dealing with the same concern, right? So end of the day, you have to do some kind of compute. You have to manage all that stuff. So, so all the things that we, that, that uh, advantage of, uh, um, a component model applies there. Okay. Now, uh, we've been working on this is product called Stateful Data Flow, which is a streaming process engine that deal with the real time data. And, and these are some of the alternatives that we are trying to build as a lightweight alternative to uh, products like Apache Beam, Kafka Stream, uh, Flink. I'm not sure how much you guys are uh, familiar with this. Basically, these are dealing with uh, trying to build a real-time analytics, you know, like you know, fraud detection, predictive maintenance, and integrate various different sensors and edges. And end of the day, the streaming process engine is, is all about transformation, this transformation logic, and based on certain state. Um, so, 
It's the same story, transformation logic. And this actually ended up being and very suitable for using um, component model. And in our cases, we are, we are uh, building toward to building this is called event-driven architecture. That we are building that entire thing is all the data is can be modeled as a stream of events, and using that you can actually build a arbitrary complex uh, uh, any kind of a, a computation for the data stack. Okay. So we take the uh, what we learn from the component model from the left side and apply it to our stateful operator. So we take those things and we actually replace the, the computation logic here um, into our operator. So instead of having to run this in, uh, for example, like if you run in uh, big data in Java world, of course this is running uh, JVM, or even a uh, specialized uh, Python code, we run in a component model, uh, same execution engine. And we, we, not, we also can access the basically other kind of resource that component model gives you HTTP, you know, maybe we can talk to GPU or key, uh, key value. Now, uh, there's the challenges, of course, that we that are dealing with the state. That's, we're gonna you know, talk about that using, uh, using Apache Arrow as an example. Okay. So now what is use cases for uh, using the Apache Arrow in here? Uh, basically, when you're dealing with uh, things like fraud detection, um, you are dealing with basically trying to detect pattern of things in multiple time window. Um, so you partition the data into different time interval and you count them uh, based on certain kind of similarity. And if, you know, for example, like this credit card transaction, you're trying to detect whether certain transactions happen, uh, for example, collected by the uh, location. So if, if somebody uh, trying to withdraw the, uh, the credit card in Paris at the same time in London, at the same time, that's one way to, you know, obviously we tell that's a fraud, you know, that's a fraud or not. Um, so, in the way we kind of do it is, is through a data frame, which is that I'm going to uh, sort of go overview. So basically, the data frame is really one of the popular um, structure for using analytics. Uh, it's you know, rarely used in uh, data. Uh, sciences and machine learning community, you know, Pandas and Spark and Polus. It's basically is to build, similar to the table, you build this data in terms of a series of uh, data. And you can think of a columns. And you put together uh, this is called data frame and they allow you to do very complex uh, structured data analytics. Okay. Now, these are designed to uh, run in a basically column, you can see that it's made of series, which is a column. And the reason why is because, and this is for the analytics, is because the uh, building uh, data, data in a column format is much more efficient. It's typically 10 to 100 times faster. So that's why it's, it's uh, very popular in, uh, in data science community. And, and you can actually leverage using, a, you don't even actually have to have a GPU, you can actually using a CMD uh, in your uh, regular CPU to accelerate this. Um, and the major difference between the row and the column is, is that uh, you build a data buffer in, in terms of a columns. So, so instead of having to um, re have a, a data structure where you, re you, you build out series in terms of fields, you build it, you group the uh, same fields in the same location that allow you to fit those data into the same uh, re register. Okay. Now, so that comes the question is, how do you access this uh, data frame in, in our guest, right? So obviously, the, one of the things that the first to explore was to, what if we use a share, uh, a share uh, memory? So because the guest, uh, the idea, uh, the, the main things that drive is, so we want to make the user experiences seamless possible. So, so if somebody from the Panda 
a developer wants to use the data frame, they are already familiar with those data frame API. Uh, if somebody wants to use, the, you know, whether Rust or Go or even a JavaScript, they should be able to bring their own data library. So that means that we should easily, the most probably the most the simplest is to bring that memory into the guest. Uh, so the first thing I kind of like, uh, 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 the first experiment was to using into the shared memory. So uh, WASM uh, has a, this a standard called shared memory that is designed to uh, share the memory between guest and host. So basically you build a, a memory infrastructure and then you can uh, expose the guest and the host uh, simultaneously. Now, um, this is where the error coming in, because in order to share this memory, right, each of these languages has a different, maybe, have a format. So this is what the error kind of solved that uh, problem. So it's, a, it's, a, it's becoming a standard for sharing uh, column out data between different uh, toolings. So instead of every libraries provide their own format, each of each of those libraries consume the same data format called uh, error format, which is basically there's a standard for laying out this uh, in terms of that, and, and, and it's pretty much widely uh, supported. Okay. So the first uh, uh, experiment is to put this shared memory into the error format. So you write this, the host, whoever wants to write the uh, data, uh, write that in an error format, and then the Python uh, example, Cur has the, already has the Panda, uh, Panda library, already has a way to import those library into the uh, into the Python uh, uh, the Panda library. Now, the this is so if this works, um, we need to build a kind of adapter. Uh, for example, this is in Rust where you have to import this library in a format in a guest to bring that into the, uh, into the Rust guest. Then you can actually then actually execute the Polas. Polas is, uh, uh, by the way, is uh, one of the uh, popular uh, Rust library for accessing a data frame. So, you sh so once that data memory is inside a guest, you can actually um, uh, run this uh, Polas, uh, Polas code just like um, uh, non-WASM code, okay? Um, however, there is uh, uh, some challenges into this, uh, uh, this approach, because the first point is that this uh, proposal is, uh, this is already implemented in the WASM time. However, most of this guess is designed for JavaScript, is to share between the browsers and the JavaScript uh, client. So, it doesn't seem to be supported by other languages uh, like uh, Rust and Go and uh, uh, you know the Python. So after doing a kind of experimentation at the end, it, it doesn't seem like this is this is widely uh, supported yet. Okay, so so the next is to walk around is to uh, copy the buffer. So instead of having to share the uh, share the buffer, you copy the error buffer into the guest. And, and then you can consume the same way. So you still have, can consume this uh, uh, buffer inside a, a Python or Rust uh, a data frame library, but you, you, you're copying some data. Now, assumption is that this buffer size is fairly small because when you're dealing with this operation, real-time operation, so one of data is going to tend to be not that big uh, because you're not accumulating a huge amount of rows uh, only certain things as you chunk the time. So, so, so this allows, so this, however, have to build a width library. So this is a width library to be, uh, kind of a wrap this error buffer in a width format. So using this API, the width API, the guests can copy the uh, uh, error library. And you can see this is pretty much one-to-one -one translation of error spec, because error is made of this uh, list of arrays. And each of the arrays is a type, right? So you have uh, I32, I64, F34, all the arrays are same, same format. So with this, and then there's a column of metadata that defines what the, meta, uh, what the type is. 
So with that, you can actually copy this into uh, guest library and, and actually uh, uh, to access it. Okay. Um, so however, the challenge with this also is that this adopter was end up being uh, uh, quite uh, complex. And you have to build this adopter for many languages, not just you know, for Rust, because uh, we happen to use Rust, but for Go and Pandas. And it requires, and if you are dealing with uh, something like a drone, you have to also copy many tables. And, and also the, the biggest issue is you cannot deal with the large table. Now, most of the time is the tables are small, so it's, it's not a really big problem. But in certain cases, when you're joining uh, certain operations uh, table with some historical data, in that case, uh, one of the tables ended up being fairly big. So, and other the, the, the complexity of tooling as uh, in terms of uh, some of the, like a Rust guest library, the libraries tend to be fairly complex. So that caused a lot of build issue, uh, time to build. So this was kind of, um, after that, uh, come out with the, let's come out with another alternative. Okay. So the new strategy is, is to model error as a uh, resource. Okay. So uh, I'm not sure how much of component resource are really where of kind of popularized, but this is one of the most powerful features of component model, which is to represent the external resource as a kind of arbitrary uh, blob uh, with a handle, basically. You give a handle, and then you can actually invoke a functions, and then you can actually pass these handles around. Right? And this is a kind of similar to how, like, uh, for example, like, uh, you know, the, how uh, traditionally, like, Windows NT used to have those handles and, and, and other operating system. And this, the resource can be arbitrary, very complex, right? It can be a data frame, but it can be vector, tensors, can be anything that you can imagine. The biggest difference is that uh, with this other kind of handle, it's a, it's a fully type, right? And on this, the example on the resource are kind of a lot of examples on, on the, um, basically byte array, but you can actually represent an arbitrary, you know, your custom data type. So this ends up being a very powerful uh, way to do it. Okay, so so idea is to model this arrow as the, our type interface, expose that to the guest, and they can consume without having to build adapters and so forth, because the we generate adapter for you. Um, the only downside is that um, now you can no longer use the uh, sort of a uh, language specific the data frame API that already gives you. We kind of have to use this with the face. Maybe we have to build other, other adapters on it. So you, you, you trade off um, uh, the complexity with the um, uh, kind of a uh, limitation. Uh, and, and this is I'm still trying to figure out whether it was a, you know, what a limitation and how far to, you know, uh, we're going to go with this. Right? So, the, the way we kind of approach was to build this so that has the data frame, this which has a, a, a multiple, uh, so has a few uh, uh, parts. So first is the expression, right? So with the data frame, the power of data frame is, is you can actually build this, this query expression using programmable API, right? So you don't have to use a SQL, right? So that's the whole, one of the benefit of this data frame API is you can use your whatever language you to, to build this expression, right? So kind of model, this is from another popular data frame library called Data Fusion, uh, which is a kind of simpler than other one, other library things like a, um, a Polos, uh, to build this one expression. So end up building this kind of expression tree, right? So if you look at the right one here, there's filter expression uh, that consists of, you know, binary, you know, basically HD tree, and has operators, and so you can actually have to build out this one, you know, basically uh, expression tree. So that's the one aspect, so that's one part. Uh, the second part is the, actually the data farm itself, right? So you represent it as a resource. And you can run, basically, you pass the run here, and you pass arbitrary this uh, AC tree, to, which creates another data frame, right? So you can, when you run it, it creates another data frame and returns another handle to you. And you can do select, 
uh, you can just sort um, and you can get a shape, right? Shape means that what is the size of the columns and, and the rows and so forth. Um, and, then, and then the other one is, is that if you have, now you get, a, uh, you get a value, how do you iterate, right? So you don't want to get, uh, if you get the, this data frame uh, expressed, uh, if you, get, you can, this table can be a lot of rows, right? So another one is return another handle, which is a row one, so row value. Right. So this is a row iterator, so similar to a lot of concepts in basically iterator, it's just to iterate the values. Right. So once you get the data frame, you start with the sum um, uh, beginning. It can uh, tell you when it's uh, beginning or end, when to skip, and when to get the value. And this value, which is a, a literal, can be any, any uh, um, arrow uh, values. And the lastly, which is the SQL interface, right? So this is another way to do, which is that uh, to, since the data frame API can be the program tree, but also it's convenient to send the SQL, right? So you can actually uh, send the SQL and actually express it, actually run it. And so, it, and it can be any arbitrary SQL, SQL expression that uh, our, uh, whatever the implementation of uh, the data frame, they, uh, that we, that we implement it. And we end up using a Polar API because it has a very flexible, but uh, we could also provide to use the data fusion or other kind of uh, uh, providers. So here, this is executing, and this is running inside a guest. Right? So this is running inside a guest as, as a part of the operators. Okay? So this is a full example of our aggregate operators, right? which is to basically the counting, right? So once we uh, get the um, uh, time series, uh, the partition by the time, and and count number of words, or this is a very example of we are counting words, get the top 10 rows, and once we get the rows, then we iterate, and once we iterate, then we transform into something that to output into JSON. So for example, that could be sent to the dashboard, that could be sent to either, you know, downstream, uh, expression. So, so this exercise, like the uh, four different parts of uh, data frame API, you run a SQL, you run rows, a schema to get inspect uh, what kind of you know uh, the values you have, and then you do the next. Okay, and I'm just going to give you a simple demo of our all, all together running, and hopefully this this works. So this demo is basically what this is. Uh, let me just come here. It's designed to uh, consume data from City of Helsinki uh, to NQTT. So we actually take the consuming events from City of NQTT, uh, pulling the data as a stream on real time. Okay. So we have two topics. Remember, everything in, in, in our case is everything stream. So if you do, Okay. So this is the real-time events coming from Helsinki, and basically it tracks the, uh, uh, the metro uh, uh, buses, different vehicles, and, and it gets the speed and longitude and latitude. Okay. And what we want to do is when I compute the last, you know, the most the highest, the, you know, the top five vehicle um, by every five minutes. Then we run this, um, our computation. So our S STF basically can, it's a chain of operators and we use this YAML. You can see this type here, vehicles and stat and services. And then we do some kind of transformation and we partition data and we compute the data and we average out uh, to order the speed by 10. And each of these operators is runs in a WASM. And so because of WASM, we can actually run this in a very light speed and it can scale. So let me just run this one here, the UI. Okay. And so we have a UI. Okay. 
and this uh, is representation of this graph of these operators uh, running it. And we can actually now uh, look at the stat. And this is computing this stat that evaluating this expression on, uh, on the real time. And this is, should be the top here, computing here, uh, coming out here. And if you do, you can, and if you can see the end output here. Sure. Let me hear. Sorry. Okay. And computing this is updating here. And okay. Oh, let me see here. Something's not right. Let me go and run this again. Okay, now it's working. This demo got here. And you can see this output is coming from uh, average out here. So if you look at very careful. Okay, so here is a vehicle speed. This is the top five vehicles coming here. And if you watch this one carefully. Sorted by the bus ID, the vehicle stat here. And, you see, and it has things like event details, route, and what speed. Okay, so that demo, so that's just so that's the demonstration of uh, uh, running uh, that uh, data frame operations inside um, inside Wasm. Okay, um, and then just back here. Huh? Now there's other. Things that we are kind of exploring, things like integrating uh, vectors and tensors and other kind of ML models to represent that as part of our, uh, 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 our products and other kind of that that, um, that we actually explore. The thinking of uh, in, in, as the next stage, and this is a link to our project if you want an interesting how that works. Okay. And that's it. Question. Thank you. Okay. Questions? Sure. So uh, in, the, in the demo part, so the default, there were all those different controls. So those were statements of trust. That yes. Wasn't yes. Yes. Uh, yes. So this is we. So basically, the SDS support two. Yeah, yeah. So that's right. So because we didn't have a lot of time to go over because the, uh, uh, the part, this part of aspects was that this is inline. So basically, you can actually uh, write a this code in inline, or you can actually bring another uh, component. You can actually build using a Rust or, or Python because it wasn't component in any tooling and bring it. Right? Happen to it. This is inline, just easier to write. And then the, our the STF, what does is it goes generates this stack, and then compile this code it and create a Wasm component. Okay, and and that uh, one the unique thing about uh, this the, the way we do the Wasm is that this operator everything is a fully typed, right? Because here you see this one here operators, it takes. A vehicle, right? Assign timestamp, so which is to operators to take the extract the timestamp from the event, and this is a BP, and the BP is um, the vehicle step properly here. So this is the actually the the model coming from NQTT, and uh, this uh, we have another connector that I haven't shown you that actually materialize uh, that actually uh, uh, take that from NQTT into our phobia topics. And we automatically serialize it, deserialize it um, here using our 3 JSON. 